one of these days, we're going to farm Echidnuts, all the ReZero content. So just please shut up and stop asking. If I see one more question, if I see one more comment asking, are you going to farm ReZero? What if? I will just ban you from there on out. But hey, we have a summer 2024 tier list. This guy had an amazing spring 2024 tier list. We already farmed that video. Gigak, bro, that tier list is an L. Let's see what Echidnut has to say. The summer 2024 anime season has good anime, not yep. good anime. Stepsisters, regular sisters, fat <laughs> elves, deer, twin sisters, more deer, Harley yep. Quinn in an isekai. And meanwhile, over in slime season three, oh they're boy. still just having meetings. Meeting to discuss all of this. Anyway, let's go ahead and rush into this tier list. Let's Alia, go. Sometimes simple. Alia sometimes simps her feelings in Russian. Um, S tier. S tier. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's not S tier. I'm going to put it actually in A tier. Because you know what? I think everyone watching Roche today doesn't actually care about the plot. Genuinely. I think that most people watching Roche today don't even care about the elections. Don't even care about the debates. They don't care about Alia or Masachika's growth. They just want Yuki to show up and say some Winces jokes. Genuinely. Based on the numbers that I've seen, I think the vast majority of people just want to say... Just want to see Yuki say degenerate shit. They don't actually give a fuck about the plot. Simpson Russian is an anime about a girl named Alia who hides her true feelings for the main character by saying them in Russian. Except he he's playing a uh, Russian uh, army uh, theme based. Secretly speaks Russian too, so he understands everything she's saying, but he doesn't tell her that because because then the yep. anime would end. I do yep. wish he would quit Stalin and hurry up and tell her that he knows Russian because I think- If that happens, then what do you do? Well, then you could have a totally separate uh, development of these characters where now they're in their gushy gushy moments, right? Because now she knows that he knows Russian, but they're probably, I don't know. Are they gonna like, if they do that, maybe then it goes into like Naruto Shippuden, right? This, sorry. So this is Roshitere and then there's Roshitere Shippuden. Shippuden will happen after uh, Masatsuka confesses, or the show will end with Masatsuka confirming, who knows. He could potentially have a very cute romance with his sister. Yeah, the real reason I'm watching this shit is because the main character's little sister is yeah. trying to launch a special military operation on her brother's dick. And that's yep. Putin it mildly. F Putin it mildly, get it? Honestly, like, most people watching this show, again, do not care about the plot. They don't give a fuck about the different things going on in like Alia's development, the mysteries of who that playground girl could be, who most likely is Masha. None of them care, bro. They just care about Yuki doing this and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just kind of telling the average anime watcher, like, all you care about is just the fucking incest memes. Every morning, she invades his bed while he's asleep, and now I think I finally understand why the Targaryens Anyway, yeah. I thought the little tier. sister was the best part of the anime, but... I Agreed. Even if she is obviously baiting with the incest stokes, you cannot deny that Yuki is the best portion of, you know, Roshitere. She just... Even when she's not doing the fan service stuff, her, like... Her, her, her entire, like, demon lord act with Ayano, I love that, too. I guess it's all relative. A tier. I yeah, incest fair. that you watch this anime. Especially if you're Russian. Because, I mean, what else... I hear most Russian people watching this is cringing of how bad the voice acting is based on the comments that I've been reading. So are you gonna watch the Olympics? Plus Sized Elf is an etchy anime about a bunch of fat elves trying to improve their elf esteem by yep. losing some weight. Yep. Now, this isn't a dating app, so I gave them a chance. And I guess the one positive thing I can say is that I'm gonna skip this part because uh, plus size elf is a little bit risky. Tower of God was never- D tier. D tier, bro. Tower of God? I think it belongs in B tier, guys. I'm sorry. And you can't get mad at me. Unless if you've actually seen my reactions, you know how I feel about Tower of God. I've shown, I poured my heart and soul out for this anime during the reactions. There's no way you're going to say I'm a Tower of God hater. But the anime that we're watching right now, the studio, bro, it's very mediocre. It's very mid. The whole Urek versus Veal fight, I understand it was supposed to be short, but it's just like, how the fuck is Isekai Shikaku having better animation in their fights recently compared to this? Not to say that Isekai, Isekai Shikaku is bad, but it's just like, you would think that a show like this that's just been so hyped up would be carefully treated, but nah, bro. This adaptation is like a fucking 6 out of 10. I'm putting this shit in like B or C tier.
Super amazing, but it didn't really have to be, because it was so unique that there wasn't anything else to compare it to. However, Season 2 feels a lot more generic than Season 1, and yep. it's starting to lose some of its charm and originality. The yep. plot points and the new characters feel- The new characters. That's another thing. Everyone remembers Tower of God for the original cast, but this new arc is starting off with a bunch of new other characters for Bomb, or Reveal, should I say. No one gives a fuck about these characters just yet. They need time to bond to it, but you can't just, like, expect people to get as hyped as Season 1 when you completely change the setting. You completely change the roster of characters that people cared about. Of course, they've seen a little bit of Blue Turtle and everyone else, but the originality, the reason that people watch Tower of God Season 1 is not there anymore. And you have a lackluster adaptation with mediocre animation. No wonder people are upset. I feel like they've been copy-pasted from other anime, and even visually now, it's starting to look like every other anime because the art style got nerfed by the mm. new studio. I can forgive them for making the animation worse, but the unique art style was the one thing that really gave this anime some charm, and they just took it and pushed it off a cliff. Don't get me wrong though, I still like Tower of God. Me too. I love the story. I just wish it was fucking better, the anime. And it isn't ruined by any means. I just thought the first B season was better. B, B or C tier. 2.5 dimensional seduction. Is it? I'm gonna skip this shit too because it's fucking fan service shit and I don't want to fucking... Eh, actually, it might be not too bad. But, um, we only watched episode one of it. I mean, it's just a power fantasy for weebs, right? This, this dude literally says, I don't want 3D, I'm 2D only. Then a girl that shows up that cosplays in that 2D character that he jacks off to every day. And then there's the whole child friend aspect too, right? So, C or B tier, right? 2.5 dimensional is seduction is an ecchi anime that's so cultured, I have to speak Latin to describe it. Veni. This anime has kind of the Veni. same premise as My Dress Up Darling, but they didn't waste time using bullshit like reason or logic. They just gave this kid a naked waifu and made him slip on- Yeah, instead of building up the main character of like a childhood trauma that made him into like, you know, uh, making like dolls and like dress up dolls and makeup artists and stuff like that, this, this dude is just a cameraman. He just a fucking can around. He just getting lucky. Power fantasy. On a banana peel so he could land on her. And then they did it again Benny multiple means to times come. every episode. B tier. Absolute. B tier. That is so sad. Tower of God on the same little 2.5 D D D sub bro. This series known for like, it is the one piece of webtoons on the same tier as this fucking, <laughs> this bullshit fan service show. Again, it's the anime adaptation, but like, man, Power of God has fallen from its fucking grace. Salute Faptor Piece. Too many losing Faptor heroines. Piece. I would put this shit in A or S tier. The more I think about it, the more I realize that maybe Makin is better in Roche today. Because Makin is not getting carried by Wincest Yuki moments to pop off. All across the board, it's just fucking cracked. It's so good. It honestly might be better than Roche today. Now, just because the viewership's high for Roche today doesn't mean it's better than Makin. But if I really think about it, why is the viewership higher? Because Yuki says some stepsis, Wincest jokes, that's it. But if we're talking about the actual fucking plot, if we're talking about every fucking episode delivering a story, is Makin better? I don't know. Not to be confused with Philadelphia, which has too many using heroin. This is a unique <laughs> harem anime where none of the girls in the harem actually like the protagonist. Each girl has another guy that they're in love with, but each of those guys has shit another on. girl that they're in love with. So in this anime, literally everyone gets cucked. And yeah, literally NTR on a shirt that they pointed to. Obviously, they know what they're doing. It's a very brilliant uh, twist to rom-com where... We've seen every rom-com, but now this is like, all right, this dude has just a bunch of girls that lost. They're all fucking cucked. And it's just like, what? And that's just reality, boys. No matter how much of a Giga Chad you are, there's always a Giga Chad. But that doesn't bother Nukumizu-kun. He might not have a girlfriend, but he has multiple girlfriends, and they give him more action on accident than most people get True. on purpose. He's kind of like that undercover straight kid who pretends to be gay just to get invited to the girl's sleepover. What a fucking analogy. S tier. Agreed. That's extremely based. Putting Maki in over Roche today is extremely based, and I'm down. I am totally down. This anime is genuinely great. If you haven't seen it, go fucking watch it. I think this might be my personal favorite and easily the most underrated anime of.
Is it underrated? There's not a lot of people talking about it. All I have is a gauge based on the YouTube reaction viewership. And I think that the average viewership per each week has been fantastic. Very consistent. But I don't think, I don't think a lot of people are really talking about this compared to some other bigger names. Maybe it is underrated. Of the season. However, it isn't the best anime of the season. There's oh. one anime airing right now that's just way better what? than literally everything else. If you say Gigi Harm, I'm gonna fucking lose it. And I can't wait to talk about this ad. Boys. Nikkei just- Yeah, Nikkei, Evangelion ad. Bro, come on now. Use your Echidna discount code for your free temples. Pseudo harem. Fuck you. Pseudo harem is trash. Fuck you. No. No, I'm being mean. I'm being unreasonable. There's nothing wrong with it. Episode 1 was fun. Episode 1 was very fun. But it's just the next couple episodes, they just kept going with the same shit. And the whole... It's not... I'm not sure if it's for coma, but the way that it's... Uh, the story is presented in the manga, obviously it's going to have limitations in the, in the anime because it's going to be like really fast short skits. I don't know. Because there was no overall plot and it was just the same recycled different... Oh! I'm imp kun Oh, I'm cool kun Oh, I'm I'm fucking the twin tail. Chan. It's just like, ugh. I, I'm just I'm just cringing at this point. I, I even if you brought a new fucking roster of characters, maybe I would have watched a little bit more if there was like a mucking milf chan. But I, I don't know, bro. I I I I don't know. Nothing wrong with the show. I'm just not the fucking target audience. Harem is not your average harem anime. Instead of having a hundred different girlfriends, this one time girl the protagonist has one girlfriend with a hundred different yep. personalities. She switches from a sundere to a yandere to your little sister to your dad. But despite how many different per <laughs> to your dad because he disappeared personalities she has, I think everyone agrees that her default one is the best. At first, I thought the shit was kind of terrifying though. I don't know who traumatized me, but I was legit afraid of this girl until after a few episodes. The premise is established and her relationship with the protagonist actually becomes the cutest thing ever. If you're a fan of romance anime, I would highly recommend watching this because it's extremely wholesome and adorable. Also, I hope they're paying this voice actress more than usual because she has to voice like 15 You know she's not. different characters at once. A tier. Yeah, that's probably right. Again, doesn't mean just because just because I cringe doesn't mean it's a bad anime. It's, 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 it's I, I like the I like the concept. It's just, <sighs> just I was, I was just watching and I was like, it's just the same shit over and over again. There's no actual fucking plot. This dude doesn't fucking deserve any of this shit. This girl is just going to fucking schizo delusion, just bringing out different fucking cringe rules just to get the affection of this guy that doesn't even fucking re realize what's fucking going on. It's just like I'm tired of this shit. I want to watch something else. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not the target audience. This shit makes me fucking sick. Suicide Squad is Suicide Squad is B or C tier. B or C tier. Heavily carried by the marketing. Heavily carried by Harley Quinn. The story, mediocre as fuck. And it's so sad because it's the author of ReZero. But with an IP like Suicide Squad and DC, right? There is limitations on the creativity that a ReZero author can do. So obviously it's just a... It's a cheap sponsored ad content. There's no love or passion poured into it. It's just mid. For the sake of DC, that's it. Sakai is one of those anime that would have been so good if it- If they actually gave a fuck about it rather than slapping Harley Quinn on the fucking anime and hoping that it's gonna carry. Was. Putting Harley Quinn in an isekai sounds pretty interesting on paper, but I think this anime gave me ADHD. Halfway through the latest episode, I realized I had just been staring at my door the whole time, analyzing it. <laughs> like, why- you were analyzing your door instead of the show? Wow, my door is really shaped like a door. It's actually in- That's gotta be so sad, right? If you're analyzing your door because you got so bored of Suicide- <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Suicide is the Christ Squad, I don't think is a bad anime. But it's definitely not a great anime. Right? The whole premise is a generic isekai plot, but you have Suicide Squad going in there and- it's fun to see them fuck shit up. And at the end of the day, you know, they fuck shit up. <laughs> they get put in jail because they got in trouble. And it's like, oh no. We need, we, there's a new problem. Who's going to save us? Suicide Squad will. They bail us out and they act as, you know, villains. Even though they're trying to do... They're saving everybody and they fuck shit up. And it, that's the whole joke, right? It's just like a bunch of people fucking shit up. They're Suicide Squad. It's like, oh my god, how could you do this? You're supposed to be our isekai heroes. And we just walk away in flames. But it's just, you know... It's just a mid-anime, there's nothing bad or good about it.
infuriating to watch this anime because whenever anything happens, you can just imagine a hundred ways that they could have done it better. And it made me wonder if this was B even written by a human. Oh. Yeah, written by Tape Nagatsuki, ReZero author. And that was a shock to me until I heard that there was a lot of limitations from DC of the creative expression you could do with the plot of DC. Because obviously, they can't fuck around with the DC you know, IP. You gotta be very safe. It's gotta be very vanilla. And he's not gonna give his best writing into this. He's, why, why fucking bother doing that when he can, you know, put that into fucking ReZero? Tape got his bag. Suicide Squad DC got their bag. And us, you know what we got? We got a mid-anime. No. That must be a glitch. No matter- And this is the dude. A kid nut. Literally has a profile picture of ReZero characters, makes ReZero content, it feels bad, right? No matter how much I like the author of ReZero, and despite how attracted I am to Harley Quinn, I can't lie to you guys, this Shit anime mid. is mid. And in fact, I challenge you to watch this anime and just try to care about anything that happens. If the funniest shit is when I called this anime mid and made a video about it, <laughs> there were retards literally saying, only brain dead average anime consumers think Suicide Squad is bad. This show is so big brain. There is such a deep plot to it. Because you're stupid, you can't appreciate this gigantic IQ show. And I'm like, really? Listen, if you're going to say that about ReZero, I say glaze. If you're going to say that shit about Mushoku Tensei, I say glaze. But of all the fucking isekai that you could have picked to glaze, you say Suicide Squad is the biggest IQ anime. That's the thing that pissed me off. You had every other choice to feel like an intellectual superior, but you chose Suicide Squad. That is just the most dumbest bait there has ever been. If you lose, you have to subscribe. And if you win, um, Mr. Beast will come to your house and give No. No. Go away. Give you a billion dollars and a blowjob. C tier. Hey, yo, what? Here. Love is... C tier? Yeah, I think that's accurate. C tier? I agree. Indivisible by twins. I haven't seen this anime. Is this good? This anime is about two twin sisters that are both in love with the same guy, and they take turns dating him, but- Yo, this is domestic girlfriend opening he's playing in the background. It never works out because one of the sisters is always left out. First, he dates the older one, which yeah. makes the younger one sad. So younger they one break cucked. up, and he starts dating the younger sister instead. <laughs> what? Oh, he's dual wielding both sisters? Which then makes the older one sad, so then they break up, and now nobody- Stop. What if I told you Threesome. that there was a way? A way for Dual all wielding. three of them to be Mushoku Tensei, baby, Nitoryu, let's go. Happy at the same time. It's simple. Mm. The sisters date each other. Jokes aside, what? I actually- Did it actually go incest Yuri route? That would be a twist on another level. Imagine baiting people, thinking that this is just like a, a dude that gets with both sisters. And then they're like, nope, this shit was actually Yuri. Incest Yuri. And imagine if they doubled down on that. Holy fuck. That would be the craziest twist, huh? That would be the craziest shit that, I, I don't know. A lot of people might just drop it because they're like, well, I didn't sign up for this. But other people would be like, god damn, this dude's standing on business. We almost had a threesome once. I was so close. I only needed two more people to join. This anime reminds <laughs> Almost had a threesome, that's right. I almost had a foursome once. Just needed three more people, man. So close. Reminds me of domestic girlfriend because the sisters are basically at war with each other fighting over this guy, even though they could easily resolve the entire conflict with a two minute conversation. But while I have you staring at the screen wishing this was you, anyone who subscribes in the next five seconds, Mr. Beast will bring all- I do not want a blowjob for Mr. Beast, stop it! All your dead family members back to life. Oh what? He got Edo Tensei? He can bring back my family members back to life? Nah, fuck that shit. I don't want that shit either. C tier. My dear friend Nokotan. <sighs> my dear friend Nokotan. Where should we put this? At the top of C tier or at the bottom of B tier, right? Top of C tier at the bottom of B tier. Is a really absurd gag humor anime about a girl with antlers who goes to school, there's deer everywhere, and mm. a bunch of shit happens. S deer. Just kidding. I actually expected this anime to be a lot funnier, but sadly, most of the jokes aren't gonna make you laugh unless you're of the age where you need to stay away from Drake. There's a. <sighs> He's right. He's right. The jokes don't always land. 
Of course, there's no actual plot because this is a slice of life, crazy anime that they're trying to market it as like the next Nichijou. But I don't think they were even trying to be the next Nichijou. Again, the viral campaign of the, the trailers, the opening, it went too crazy. And they're now suffering from success. A bar has been set, a standard that could never be met. And every episode, it's just a dumb, cute show, right? It's not amazing. It's not bad. We're just turning our brain off and watching these girls do dumb shit, but... It sucks, right? It sucks to see Dear Anime fall from its grace. But was, but was it ever on its grace, you know? I think it's an imaginary pl point that a lot of people conflate due to the viral marketing. There's a lot of memes that seem like they would have got less than five upvotes on Reddit, and sometimes it just feels like the anime tries way too hard. I still think the first episode is worth a watch because- Yeah, the first episode I think did deliver on the promises of what the opening of the trailers did, but after that, it falls off so quick because Obviously, you can't just, like, keep going fucking balls to the wall, fucking full-on gas crazy shit. And they introduced a roster of characters in the beginning. When people watched Nokotan episode 1, they enjoyed the bizarreness with Nokotan and everything about that gag. But Koshitan is actually the straight man of the show, and what happens next is you get introduction for the next like two or three episodes of different characters and Nokotan is a little bit on the side and you get to see more Koshitan's reactions to the bizarreness happening and a lot of people, honestly myself included, I think Koshitan is one of the weaker characters in Nokotan. I think that Koshitan's reactions as a straight man is quite mid in terms of delivering this humor and most of the times the humor actually delves from Nokotan and because of that a lot of people stop watching, it's already fallen off, the interest is dying off, it's in terms of, in the game of anime reactions on YouTube, the first episode is always going to do fucking the most amazing. Then it's going to obviously taper down, right? And it makes sense. Everyone wants to check out the first episode because of the virality or new show, and then they get introduced to the show for what it is, and then about like 60 to 70% of the people will stick around. But Nokotan's fall off from episode one, oh my god, it is so fucking sad. I still enjoy it. I'll still finish it. It's just... Not like this. This comedy is subjective, so you might find it really funny even though I didn't. C tier is where I would rank this now, yeah. but if I was 10 years old, Fair. I would have given it B tier, so I'm just gonna go with that because I was a lot smarter back then. Oshinoko noko. Oshinoko noko ta. <laughs> S tier. I think Oshinoko. Maybe the earlier episodes were a little slow, but even if it was slow, I don't think the anime was. Bad. I put this shit S tier. Loco has a second season airing right now, and it's a fucking banger. S tier. Yep. While the first season was about True. forming an idol group, season two has the characters performing a stage play and refining their acting skills. And that's fine, but what has me truly invested in Oshinoko is Aqua's revenge subplot, as well as the underlying waifu war between Akane, Kana, and Ruby. Thus, yep. I'd like to apologize to everyone who heard the blasphemy I said last season, because what? it seems that I severely underestimated Akane. I didn't yeah, the whole, I will let, let, I will literally help you kill them, man. That shit was crazy. I mean, we already saw a little bit of glimpses of her getting too close to the truth last season. But now, as she realizes more of it, you know, Aqua and Ruby potentially being like, you know, the hidden child of Hoshino Ai. And like, Akane willing to fucking kill. That's crazy, dude. What are you fucking saying? You're 16, 17 year old kids with hormones fucking going through. You want a fucking criminal record for the rest of your life? Who cares? It's anime. Akane's down. No, she was crazy. I totally thought she was just a normal actress like Kana. So naturally, I ignored them both and shipped the main character with his biological <laughs> Incest, sister. Baby. But this season, I realized how crazy Akane truly is. Therefore, yep. my mind has been changed and I declare her best girl. Best girl? Really? Unless one of the other girls turns out to be crazier than she is. I think that Oshinoko, if you really think about it, it feels like everything has been building up for Kana. I feel like Kana is like honestly the main girl right now. Even if you think that Akana is having the spotlight, think about season one. What was season one? Immediately in episode one, you already meet Kana at the prime of her fucking career. Then it's her fucking downfall, but then she gets built back up by joining the idol group and wanted to do something more, right? That's season one. And even at the end of season one, Aqua literally is there for Kana before the big presentation. And that really cheers her up and we, we continue. And then season two, what happens, right? Kana is now like... There's so much development to her of how Akane used to think of Kana as like a hero, like an idol. But then obviously drama happens, but still she wants to bring that Kana out. Kana is afraid to get back into the prime position of being a prime egoist because of the fall off. 
But then, you know, it, it's really building her back up with the help of Aqua as well. It's really cool. It's really amazing. I think Kana is one of the most, like, developed characters in Oshinoko so far. Right now, if you think about it, what other character has gone through this level of development and growth? Kana is. Doesn't mean she's the best character, but I feel like season one and season two, bro, the writing all towards Kana is insane. Aqua right now? Now, Melt's development is very short. It's not the same level of Aqua. Melt's development is like a tenth of um, uh, Kana's, in my opinion. He did have that, but it's not in the same fucking tier, in my opinion. Yeah, he had a high peak, but not in the same level. Um, the... <laughs> Aqua right now, bro? He's just so fucking edgy, huh? And a lot of people call him too edgy, but if you think about it, from episode one, he was down for the murder mystery that Darkstar literally showed up in the car, right? At the near the end of the episode. It's a little bit annoying to constantly have this dark, depressing, edgy dude. <laughs> but, but, like, the, the way that they, like, it feels like a battle shonen right now. I go like, Oshinoko literally has power scaling. It does. It feels like it's, it's so battle shonen with, like, the different eyes coming out. We meme out the fucking manga Q starring on of Akane, yeah? It was memeable, but, like... This shit is... And now Kana's get her fucking eyes, you know? And then Aqua's dark fucking star evolved in the dark hole. And he's fucking biting into Himekawa. And like the whole like, you know, for others, acting is their joy. For me, acting is suffering. I am an Avenger. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's so hype. I... It's a very interesting way to compel an audience to watch this manga or anime that is supposed to be... It's not, it, the theme isn't really that exciting. It's about the idol in the idol industry. But the way that you shonenify this arc, I think, is definitely nice for monkeys like me that just want to see, you know, hype shit happen. So I love Oshinoko right now. I genuinely love it. But I see a lot of people saying, yeah, this shit is becoming a battle shonen. What the fuck? I, I'm all for it, though. Actress like Kana, so naturally... And I declare her best girl. Unless one of the other girls turns out to be crazier than she is. The best girl still is mom to me. Yup. Our quote-unquote mom. She is the best girl. Twilight out of focus. Yeah, we showed. Did you watch this? Is the new gay anime that was so gay it made Crunchyroll remove their entire comic. Oh, it was section. this one. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think this anime was anything special, and it's definitely not for me. <laughs> but it also. <laughs> Well, if you compare this scene with any other scenes of anime that we watch on a daily basis, this ain't even bad. Nah, bro. You think that this is fan service? Nah, bro. We, like, this is like a 3 out of 10. It's pretty tame in my opinion to the shit that we see on a constant basis, bro. But it also wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. However what the hell is this? Nobody in their right mind should watch this. It's frankly disgusting. And the fact people wasted their precious life and time creating this is a loss for humanity and anime. If I wanted to see sausage gobblers, I go to a gay bar. I want to click and read more here. Make it the lowest anime in Crunchyroll. Is there any option to give negative rating? I just hate these type of anime which are promoting gay shit. Fuck pride! Shit show! One of the worst show promoting shit work. I just hate this. This needs to be the lowest rated on Crunchyroll. Give me a choice. Opt out. Listen here, Crunchy. You are not giving us the choice to opt out of any genre in her profile setting. So if I find male to male BS like this in my feed, I'm gonna give my honest opinion about it. LGBT! LGBT BS run! Another attempt by CR or Alphabet people to make something alien become accepted not gonna happen <laughs> this is bad <laughs> this is just bad bad in many ways do not watch it because it's bad in fact this anime is bad very bad i think these are just a bunch of people that are homophobic right like there's no actual single they don't criticize the anime based on the plot it's just bad because gay yeah, I get it, right? You didn't sign up for this shit. Having a BL anime being recommended to you when you're on the homepage. Like, think about it like this, right? 
let's say you're just kind of trying to crank it. You go to your fucking favorite site. And then you get gay porn on the side. You're like, what the fuck? I didn't ask for this. For sure, I don't understand that part, right? Of the opt-out thing. But I think a lot of these comments are just rooted in deep homophobia. However, a lot of people are... Also, <laughs> it's funny because we say homophobia. No, it's a specific flavor of homophobia. Because if it's Yuri anime... Mm. <laughs> Yuri anime, two girls? I'm all in, but suddenly it's two dudes. No, I do not want that! I mean, that's not really a contradiction, right? It just means that they just don't want to watch two dudes. They just want to watch two girls. It doesn't mean that they're homophobic. They're just homophobic when it comes down to two dudes. ...are saying it's the worst thing they've ever seen, even though they've never seen it. And that's probably be- <laughs> That's true. They've never actually seen it. They just see the cover page and they say no, right? Because they're tired of Western media always trying to force an agenda into places it doesn't- Again, if you actually criticize this show and saying, listen, I've watched this show, and the way that they represent gay people in this show is so stupid, right? It's just shameless fan service and a power fantasy of people that think how a gay relationship should be. I think there's contrived writing and a poor representation of what it actually means to be gay. And they're just using this diversity inclusion uh, concept in trying to bait people to watch it. Therefore, the show is ass. See what I just did there? If I actually watch the show, then there can be actual points and logic you can use to criticize the show. But no one's saying that. People are just saying gay bad. Doesn't belong, but in this case, I don't think that applies. I don't know if you guys knew this, but the intended audience of most BL anime is Girls. actually Japanese women. Girls. And me, who has to- <laughs> And what does it say? Did it say Fujo? Fujoshi. Rotten- Oh, it literally means rotten girl? There's Fujo? Uh, and then, what was the other terms? Joso Seme? I forget. There, no, there's, there's, there's also, there's like different, there, even if there, if there's like gay shit, there's like different branches of gay, right? Like if you got two burly ass dudes going at it together, that's like bara, right? If there's like two feminine boys getting at it, it's like yaoi, right? There's like, there's like different flavors of that. These women and me who has to rank it on a tier list. But yeah, guys, I don't think this is the same as when Disney turns Darth Vader into a transgender vegan feminist. I'm pretty sure this what? is just another BL anime for straight women to get off to. So unless you have a hole in your body that you can get pregnant in, you probably aren't the target audience for this anime. All right, that's enough of that gay shit. Let's get <laughs> back to the incest. Days. All right, back with incest. Days my stepsister. Mm, B or A tier? I don't. I, I think S tier is a little bit unreasonable. I don't think C tier is right. It, it's B or A tier, right? With my stepsister. What a big year for Alabama. This is a relaxing, More psychological slice of life with a dark yet calming atmosphere. And unfortunately, no one's gotten stuck in a washing machine yet. Basically, the main character pulls a five-star stepsister who suddenly moves in with him. And no, he did not pull the five-star stepsister. The dad pulled a five-star MILF and the stepsister, and then this dude gets fucking lucky. Now they have to go from stranger. Genuinely, the dad is the biggest winner of this show. ...to siblings. To lovers. There was almost a sex scene, but the main character almost. did that annoying cliche where he covers up the girl with the blanket and says, We shouldn't do this. This anime also... <laughs> is that an annoying cliche? you rather him just take advantage of the girl that's insecure about her body and, you know, uh, her, like, what, what she's even about and just do it? Hmm. It does feel a little white nighty, right? It does. I'm not sure. ...loves to create tension for no reason. For example, there's a scene that's just a full two minutes of the character's... Oh yeah, there's a fucking two minutes. I remember the most egregious one was 40 seconds of just eating in silence. Eating dinner with no dialogue, no background music, yep. and no camera changes. And this is not peak cinema. This is Studio Dean filling out fucking watch time of their standardized episode time threshold with this filler animation. It does not mean this is on that freedom level of setting ambiance or atmosphere. Don't fucking lie to me. Also, it feels like the characters can only move in slow motion. Filler animation, bro! How does this add to the story? Atmosphere, my ass! This anime is super relaxing and I like it a lot, but B? I need to wait for the last couple episodes a? to come out oh, before I decide oh, oh. if it's worthy of A tier. It's good and it has the potential to... Yeah, I think this is fine. It's fine, yeah. A tier wasn't gonna be surprised. I didn't finish it, so I can't really say so, right? But 
based on like the five or six episodes I've seen, B or A tier, yeah? Move up, but for now, I'm gonna leave it in B tier. The elusive samurai is. Man, the Shotokans. <laughs> elusive samurai, where should it be rated? A or B tier? Yeah. I think that uh, Cloverworks went out of their way with the animation. It's fucking amazing. The initial hook was really captivating, but the jarring comedy just honestly takes the immersion away from me personally, even though there may be some funny moments. My favorite joke was when there were a bunch of paid actors, when we realized that you know, there's a bunch of, you know, uh, of our clan's fucking uh, army, you know, ready to fight, but they were just all paid actors. That was funny, but everything else, uh, I'm not really sure. The beginning was very hype, but I think it fell off real quick as people don't really like the whole samurai Japanese uh, setting. I mean, do you blame them, right? It's an English-speaking audience watching these reactions. The Japanese audience fucking loves this shit, same with Oshinoko, but it looks a samurai. I think I, it, I put it at like low A or high B. It's a really good new historical shonen anime about a kid who can move extremely fast and dodges everyone's attacks. There's a weird contrast between lighthearted humor and the depressing brutality. Yes, exactly. You're breaking the immersion. Some people say they prefer the breaking of immersion, but to me, if you want to show me a serious goddamn fucking story, then get me locked into it. The moment that you bail me out with these dumbass fucking goofy jokes, I just don't care about the story anymore. I'm not taking it seriously. ...ality of this era, but the highlight of the anime is obviously the visuals. The yes. animation is so breathtakingly... Cloverworks is insane with the animation they showed us in the earlier episodes. ...fluid, I guess my only complaint is that there isn't enough fight scenes. Again, I need to wait and see the conclusion before I give this S tier, but... S tier, bro, really? You give this anime S tier? I'd put it at like a high B, low A. It's really good so far, and I would highly recommend it. I parry everything. Is B or C tier. I am pissed off. This is my favorite anime conceptually going into this season, because I love being a one-trick pony or something. But the way that he's so stupid, he, it, it, it's not funny and more annoying. But the most recent episode where he paired a dragon, it was funny. I actually enjoyed that episode a lot. Probably somewhere in B tier. Is an anime that started with a pretty interesting premise. The main character is kind of like that last guy, except instead of dodging everything, he parries everything, yep. including these hoes. The princess <laughs> clearly has True. a crush on him, but he shuts down her every attempt. And normally I would respect that, but I think he's just too oblivious to realize yep. what's even happening. In fact, and that's the whole point of the show. Of course, the author knows he's dumb. He's making him dumb, and that's the whole point of this show. The running gag is Nora being so ridiculously strong, but not being aware, not being aware of what he's fighting, who he's fighting, the implications of the monsters as he's defeated. Right? He's he's achieving just heroic levels of feats with and thinking that he just slayed like a tiny little slime. And I get it, but at a certain point. That ugh, that lack of awareness gets more annoying than funny. In fact, he's so stupid that it kind of ruined the anime for me. Look at this guy. There it is. I bet he doesn't even know where he is. It's like the author tried to give him basic intelligence, but... But if you think about it, this dude grew up in a mountain by himself with no fucking education. And then, after the training he got from the village and got, came back to the mountains, he spent 14 years in isolation swinging his fucking sword. What do you think is going to be the mentality or the IQ or like the subconsciousness of a person that did that? Maybe it does make sense. Obviously, we don't have to take a show like this that seriously. But if you want to really psychoanalyze Noor, a dude that spent in isolation over 14 years in the mountain doing one single fucking thing, maybe it makes sense that he's this stupid. He parried it. This anime was almost good, but the main character is just so fucking dumb, I can't yeah. even find a word to describe Again, more annoying than fun. Except for retarded, but that's offensive. I am all for the R word coming back. Sorry, retarded coming back. I am so happy it's coming back. And no, retarded does not mean it's a fucking slur to use against people that were born with disabilities. No, it just means that you're being fucking... Stupid dumbass. It's funny because the Beyblade people. <laughs> off tangent. I have a second channel. Off tangent right now. Just gonna do a little plug real quick. I have a second channel called Kaka TV 2 where we watch Beyblade reactions. And <laughs> because there's like a younger audience there, 
Some people are saying, why are you saying the F word and the R word so much? You're being mean. You shouldn't say these words. And I'm like, you're too young to watch my videos. I apologize. I'm sorry. If so, I would, would never say that. C tier. With story. You C tier? <sighs> it is. It is. It is C tier. Bottom B tier. I think it's better in Suicide Squad, right? Uh, I don't know, but yeah. Wisteria Wand and Sword is about a Magic Academy student. Wisteria, where should this go? A tier or top of B tier? I think, again, the animation, if we're talking peak animation, with Oshinoko definitely, Dogakobo goes all out for Oshinoko, right? Cloverworks is, uh, Elusive Samurai is also amazing, but Wisteria, I think these are the big three in terms of the best animation quality. The plot is very generic. We've, it's not the first time we haven't heard of, you know, anti-magic, you know, anti, and like magic prejudice and, you know, a dude trying to pop off and, and, and trying to like prove everyone wrong, but he's just chasing after a girl. Like we've seen these plots, but the execution of the tropes and the cliches is very exciting. It's very hype. It's not the most deep writing. A or B tier? Who can't use magic, so he tries to brute force his way to the top with nothing but a sword and his massive pair of balls. It you kind of reminds S -tier? me of that Mike Tyson Maybe. quote. Maybe. Everyone has a plan until you're punched in the mouth. Base. Because the main character makes all these mages look like fucking losers. Oh, you spent your whole life learning spells and reading magic tomes? Well, how about I fucking kill you with a sword? How about that? Pretty much. This anime is simply beautiful, though. Not just the art and animation. Yeah. Oh, not just the art and animation. What else? But the directing and choreography feel like something out of an action movie. It's a yeah. really underrated anime, probably because the premise is kind of cliche, but I'd still highly... Even if a premise is cliche, I don't care. It's all about the execution of the cliches. Ask yourself, why is something a cliche? Because it fucking works. Because people enjoy it. That means take upon the cliche and execute it in a unique or a good way. And it's going to be good, man. We recommend it. A tier. Nice. The Monogatari series just got... Glaze. How many more times do I have to hear that Monogatari is like the best fucking anime ever? Is it actually that good, bro? Or is it a bunch of fucking neckbeard pseudo-intellects thinking that the dialogue is so deep for me, therefore I think it's the best anime? I don't know. I've never seen it. One day we'll figure it out for ourselves. Got another season out of nowhere, and Shaft obviously did an outstanding job with it. As always, this anime feels like you're watching a work of art. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of really good anime airing this season, but the Monogatari series is a masterpiece of a completely different level to the extent that it almost really? feels unfair having it on the same tier list as everything else. Every the amount of glaze for Monogatari right now is insane, yet I have not seen a single Monogatari reaction pop off on YouTube. I've never seen other people glaze this shit on the ratings as well when we're looking at the different broadcasts for like global rankings, that Otaku Spirit video we watched. So, again, let me explain to you what's happening. I think that this anime probably is objectively an amazing anime, but it's too smart. Think about the average person. Think about popularity, right? Just because something is popular doesn't mean it's better, but a lot of people enjoyed it. Do you know what kind of more people exist in the world? Do you think that there's a lot more smarter people in the world or more dumb people in the world? Think about how stupid the average person is and realize that half of them are even stupider than that, right? I think, and this might be <laughs> a very neckbeard take, perhaps there's a chance that this show is too smart for the average audience. And it is that good. And only truly <laughs> superior anime enjoyers can appreciate a show like this. And a lot of the average watchers cannot appreciate art on this level. Therefore, now you're catering towards a, a specific side of this, you know, the, the statistical graph of, you know, you got the low IQ, average IQ, high IQ people, and you're catering towards like this segment. Maybe that is the case, right? Because, like, what else would it be if people glaze this show, like, to the next fucking level, but, like, the numbers aren't there, right? Everyone hyped this shit up, but the numbers aren't there. Meaning, dumb people don't enjoy this shit. The people that watch Unga Boonga Slayer, My Caveman Academia, right? They don't watch this shit. But the people that actually appreciate good in-depth dialogue and writing and whatever this show is all about, they watch this shit and glaze it. Therefore, it's perceived like that. Every character is so well written that this season is still a banger even without Araragi-kun. Oh, yeah, the protagonist of the story isn't even a part of this
That means that SCO season 4, they got it right. Remove the fucking protagonist. The protagonist fucking sucks. And then make everyone else pop off. SAO Arisization is amazing because Kirito is missing. Season. So I guess now the only one trying to fuck Hachikuji. Mostly in season four, a little less in season three. G is me. God tier. If you're about to wow. go. Wow. God tier, huh? Even though every metric shows us that no one gives a fuck about Monogatari in terms of the people watching, how many people are seeking out the content, it's God tier, huh? All right, maybe, maybe it is just that smart, man. Maybe it's just that on a different plane of existence, man. We'll figure it out for ourselves one of these days. Go watch this just because I gave it God tier, though. I gotta warn you first, it's not for everyone. It's a very abstract, artsy, and dialogue-heavy anime, and watching it is almost like reading a book. Be ready. And that's the thing, right? You show the average person an abstract art, they're gonna think, what the fuck is this? It looks like... My dog literally went outside in the mud, rolled over on this canvas, and it looks like shit. But you're telling me that this is supposed to represent humanity. Right? Do you get that example? The anime is too smart, too on a level, next level that most people cannot appreciate it. Does that mean that it's a good anime? Does it? Or maybe this is the opposite spectrum where it's just like, like, like I, I, what is a good anime? It's all about semantics at the end of the day, right? What is a good anime is all about semantics. Everyone values different things. Some people value comedy. Some people value the complexity and the psychoanalysis of the main character. Some people value just the hype shit, hype fight. Some people value just the fucking hype animation like in Demon Slayer. Right? Some people value the world building. Everyone has their own different thing that they're biased towards. But this show, you're telling me that it's so abstract, it's so good, but most people can't even appreciate it, but it's that good? I, I don't know. It's, it's just like... What a good anime is, is can you watch it and feel happy about it? After you watch the anime, do you still think about it the next day? Right? It's hard to really quantify subjective ratings. But I think a good baseline standard is are you when you wake up when you're doing something else you're at work you're at school you're doing something else do you think about that anime because right now i think about rezero all the time when i'm at the gym i'm like oh man bro what the fuck is gonna happen with the white whale subjugation if you actually think and obsess about the anime episodes that you watch rather than it being forgotten the day after i think that means something ready to pause the episodes a billion times and oh yeah, one more thing. The main character is, uh, how do I put? He's a PDF file. How come he gets away with it, but Rudy doesn't? If we ever farm this, maybe there's opportunity for a lot of comparisons to make with Mushoku Tensei. Well, why does he get away with that? How old is he? How old is he? I don't care about the spoilers. How old is his character? Tell me right now in chat. 16? Oh, well. I mean, 16, if he's 16 and diddling other fucking 14-year-olds, that's, that's not the same as a fucking grown-ass man being reincarnated into the body of a child and diddling, you know, that's, that's, that's more fair, I guess. This, he's trying to strike a chord, if you know what I mean. Tensura Season 3, continue. Tensura Season 3. Tensura Season 3. Tensura Season 3. <sighs> B-tier. Is it better than Tower of God right now? The peaks of Tensura of season three is better than peak of Tower of God. The meetings are also plentiful. Bottom of A tier. I rated higher than Elusive Samurai and Giji Harum. A tier. A tier. Not S tier, A tier. Continued airing into the summer season after a very underwhelming first half with literally nothing but meetings. Last tier list for the first time ever. First half was nothing but meetings? That's unfair, man. While there were a lot of meetings, there was a lot of episodes that showcased the Rimuru versus Hinata fight, the Diablo of Falmuth shit. There was a lot of hype there, but for sure, there are definitely more meetings than the hype shit. Ever, I ranked this anime below S tier, and honestly, it got so boring that I haven't even caught up yet, so I can't rank it. But just for Damn. fun, let's check on the- 
The downfall of Tensura man needs to be studied. No, it doesn't need to be studied. It actually very makes sense. There's so much yapping and meeting shit that is losing the attention of the average watcher. And even if you, a light novel, a, a loyalist, is going to say, this shit is all important. You can't make it more concise. I say, fuck you. You're stupid. There's always ways to make things more concise or have a way to refer back to these points rather than having so much dialogue at play. I don't believe you. I think there's a more concise way to do it, but they're doing a very thorough adaptation of the source material from what I'm hearing. And I'm not surprised that the most people that watch Tensura just for the action scenes are bored of it and has dropped it. Makes a lot of sense to me. The slime community and see how they feel about season three. Ah, uh, yes. What's your guy's favorite meeting? My favorite meeting so far, unironically, right? Of course, this is a meme post, circle jerking. But uh, the Roto family and the, when the Easter merchant showed up, in the beginning when the, like, a church group showed up, that was very interesting to me. And... The most recent episode where we have all the leaders in, uh, you know, the Tensora world show up to our place, the pre-night festival. That was actually very interesting world building. I enjoyed those meetings. So far, I guess the next time I have to drive somewhere, I'll just put in my headphones and listen to Slime a Season podcast? 3 like an audiobook. Sp yeah, you're gonna do. You're gonna listen to the fucking English dub of it, though. <laughs> you know you can't fucking read the subtitles by audiobook. Ice and Wolf continued airing into the summer season as well, and guess what? What? It continued being S tier. I fucking- Yeah? I don't see anyone else watching this shit. I see no one getting views like this, but again, YouTube reaction numbers does not mean or prove that an anime is good or bad. It just simply shows you how many people are seeking out the reaction content for it, right? I bet it's good. I bet it is. I love this anime, and it really makes me wish Holo could have been one of my college professors because what? I don't give a shit about economics, but when Holo the Wise Wolf is talking, I listen. Also, uh, in preparation for next season, I- 40 year olds don't watch reactions, I think that's why. Damn. You're really gonna call out all the Spice and Wolf enjoyers, huh? They're 40 now? The people that grew up watching this shit. <laughs> I thought I should say that if you guys haven't watched ReZero yet, it's literally better than everything on this tier list. So yes, I agree. So please go watch that. It's unreal. Again, we're gonna farm every echidna. Like, I'm telling you right now, just shut the fuck up. You don't have to let me know to farm echidna's videos. I've already planned it out. We're gonna farm every single ReZero this dude had in this channel for all its fucking god. And more on other channels. But hey, pretty good tier list. Just like the summer tier list, I agree pretty much with everything here. I can't wait for Gigux fucking monkey ass take as he fucking watches this shit in 2x speed and gets me mad again. But hey, we'll be there too. It's all just fun content and, you know, no drama. But hey, there's the link to a kid in this video. Please go like it. Sub to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.